What's up, YouTube? Thanks for clicking on my video. Um, in today's video, we're going to be talking about how to do the same thing we did in the last video, but not use Photoshop, actually use a 3D program. So I got a free one for you. It's called Blender 2.8, and we're just, if you don't have it, you just got to come here and download it. It's a free program. Um, this thing is honestly amazing. Uh, I can't say enough good things about it and just it's mind-blowing that it's for free so it's a free download um I, I could talk about it i just want to let you guys know that if you guys know the movie next gen this movie was completely made in blender so it's just kind of showcasing some of its power you can watch it on netflix it's a good movie uh you know anyways so let's get started so you know you download it and let's open it so we're going to come over and open up Blender. I've already got mine open. When you open it for the first time, you're going to be greeted with this. And we're just going to click off it, which is going to make that thing to disappear. And here is our scene. Um, this is a cube. It's the default cube. This is a camera. That is a light right there. This is also your collection for your scene. Light, camera, cube. Clicking on these will let you select them. You can also just click on them in the scene, and it selects them. Click off. It in order to deselect it, you can also hit A to select everything, and then click off to deselect everything. So what we're going to do here is we're going to do what we did in the last tutorial, and we're going to make a cup. So we're going to make this cube into a cup, and I'm going to show you how to do that. So click on the cube, make sure it's selected. Now if we want to make any changes to an object in Blender, we need to hit Tab. It's going to take us in and out of edit mode. You know you're in edit mode because you see these points. I'm going to try and go through this as quick as possible just to show you a couple little ground rules here. All right, tab to go back into object mode. You could also come up here and select edit mode, object mode, and anything in a shortcut. You can pretty much find anything up here that's important. All right, anyways, so uh, hit tab. We're back into audit, ed, edit mode. Ugh. Tab brings you into edit mode. And we're going to click and drag to select the top parts. So just this front face is selected. And another way you can do that is up here. You can click on this, and whatever face you s click on that side selects that face. Um, so, I'm not, I don't know, I'm just going to go back for now. And we want to make this cube into a cup, so we're just going to hit G to grab it, which lets you move whatever's selected. Um, so I just undid what I just did. I'm hitting G, and now I want to pick the axis, so I'm clicking Z for the Z axis, which will move it up and down, and won't let you move it anywhere else up and down. So I'm going to bring it up to about there, and now I'm going to click the E button, which is an extrusion tool, which basically adds another thing on top of your mesh and doesn't just stretch your mesh out, but we don't want to bring it up here. What we want, I'm just going to undo that, so we're going to hit Z and then S, which is going to scale it. So we just want to kind of scale it a little bit smaller. And now we're going to hit E again to extrude, and then Z to extrude on the Z axis. Now it's kind of hard to see what you're doing here. So we need to sort of see it in the wireframe view. And there's two ways we can go to wireframe view. Hit Shift Z, we'll bring it into wireframe view, and now we can see the inside. Uh, Shift Z brings you back into, you know, solid view. You can also click up here for your different views. This is solid. This is wireframe, and if you hit just the Z key, it'll bring up this menu, which are the same four options as what's up here, solid, wireframe, rendered, and looked of. So solid, shift, plus Z brings you in and out of wireframe. You should learn that. Anyway, so I'm just going to grab it with G, the G key, and I'm just going to hit Z. I'm going to move it down a little lower. Okay, so that's basically the rough shape I want to go for. But this doesn't look like a cup. It's very boxy. So how to make this round? What you want to do is you just want to come over here to your blue icon, um, go out of edit mode, hit shift Z to make sure you're in solid mode. So, you know, tab and then shift Z is how I got back here. Tab brings you out of it, shift, anyways, anyways. So, yeah, you come over here to this blue wrench button on this side of your thing, and then you come up here to add modifier, subdivision surface, and let's just make this for, I don't know, you can make it higher if you want. The uh, higher the number, the uh, more detailed the mesh, and it's also going to be more large of a file. 
So do not click apply. Don't do that. All right. It's very important you don't don't click that right now. You don't even need to do it all. Just leave it leave it like this. Okay. So now we're gonna zoom in. All right. And there's two ways you can zoom in. The best way to zoom in is just holding holding command and just using your mouse wheel. If you hold shift, you can just kind of like move around like this in the scene, you know. I don't know, we just kind of need it center. And then Command plus Mouse Wheel lets you zoom in and out. So as you can see here, um, there's it's got all these flat faces. That's actually the mesh. That's the detail of the mesh. And if I go to the wireframe mode with Shift-Z, you can actually see the mesh looks like this. Very more, A lot more detail from just a cube. So I'm going to zoom out a little. And again, this doesn't really look like a cup, so... I'm going to go back into solid mode and hit tab to go to edit mode. And as you can see, we still see our box we initially had. And that's because we didn't click apply. And this is how we're going to turn this into a cut. We're going to use something called a loop cut, which is right here. Or the better way to do it is to hit command R and then drag your cursor over to the face that you want it to be in. So we're going to work on the outside face right now. So I'm going to initiate it. And when it's yellow and you click it, you could you now have to place it, all right? So I'm going to drag it down to the bottom and click it to final place it. So now I want to do this to the inside, but because I'm in solid view, I'm not going to be able to access this inner side, so I need to go to wireframe. I'm going to hit Command R again to put in the loop cut, and now if I try to access the middle part, I can get to it. You see? To cancel this, hit Shift-Z to come back into solid and to show you it's not letting me initiate. So you have to be in Shift-Z, click out to disengage. Shift-Z, Command-R, and let's get this middle one. And we're going to drag it down to there. And hit Shift-Z and edit. So let's just look at our object. I don't really like the top here. That's not really how the top of a glass looks. So we're going to just do exactly what we just did. But we're just going to add some to the top just to beef out the top. Shift-Z to go to edit. Command-R to do the center. And then we're going to do it again and bring it up into there. This is looking a lot like a shot glass. So I kind of want the topper part to be more wide than the bottom part. So I'm going to click and drag. Still in, still in the wireframe mode so I can select all of the points that I made. Now I'm going to hit S for scale. And I'm just going to stretch it out by dragging my mouse. And that's decent. I don't know. That's fine. And tab to come out of edit mode, shift Z to go back to solid, and that's pretty much it. Now we still have this flat side, so what we want to do is we want to right click on the object and go to shade smooth. Because right now it's on shade flat, and when we do shade smooth, oh, let me select the object and then shade smooth, it gets rid of all, it does the smooth shading, and now we don't have those flat sides. And to bring it back, we can do shade flat, shade smooth. Uh, you're going to want to do Shade Smooth for this type of stuff. So that's it. We made the cup. And I was talking a lot, so it took me a long time. So we're just going to go over here, up to File, down to Export, and Wavefront OBJ. And it's going to open up this window. I'm just going to save mine on my desktop. You can save yours somewhere else, probably a better file system than me. And, you know, Untitled is fine. I'm just going to hit Export. And it exported. So now we're going to go over to Dimensions. This is the better part. Come over into Dimensions, Create New. Oh boy, can't wait for you guys to see this. Because I don't know if you guys remember in the last video with Photoshop, whenever you import stuff, it does not import to the center of your scene. And oftentimes, if you have multiple objects, they do not maintain in placement. So I've selected my object, I'm importing it. It has just imported, and I just drag it up to the flat part so that it's not the center. F to center. Come over here, so I'm at my starter assets, go to materials, put on glass. Let's on the glass, and now let's look at a little simple render. And wow, I think that looks a lot better than the one sample I did in Photoshop. So, yeah, that's pretty much it. This is an incredibly powerful program. Now I'm going to show you how to fill it up. And I'm just going to show you how quickly we can just easily make this with uh, actual water inside of some kind or some whatever. You know, you need something in your cup. 
So I'm going to go back into Blender, and I'm just going to delete this. Hit X, brings up this menu, and delete. Now you have to have your selection selected if you want to delete it. So now I'm going to click Shift A, which brings up the Add menu, and I'm going to pick a cube and drops it into the center of my scene. I could also have done that going up here, A, Mesh, Cube. Whatever, you get all those meshes. We're focusing on the cube right now. Tab, here we go, I'm just going to speed through this. Okay, so I basically just remade the cup. It wasn't, it really just took me like a minute. Now I'm going to show you how to re put like some liquid inside of it. So what we're going to do is we're going to duplicate this cup. So we're going to make sure it's fully selected. Hit Command C, Command V to duplicate the selection in its immediate place. So as you can see, I've got two of an identical thing. So what I want to do is I'm just going to make the first one invisible and select the second one come over here to tab and I want to just get rid of all of these external faces because I just want the internal part because we're going to use that to make product. So I went over here into edit mode, selected the faces and when I click on a face it selects it holding shift and clicking another one adds to my selection. So that's how I'm doing this right now. Coming down here, grabbing that and then I'm just going to grab that and that and that and that, hit the X key to bring up the delete menu, and I'm going to del click delete vertices, which is going to get rid of all that stuff. And now I have this here, so I'm going to select this. Nope, I just, oh, so let me go back to there, make sure I got the points, grab those points. And I don't want it to be the same height as the cup, so I'm just going to kind of hit G to grab and Z to X, Z axis it and just drag it down there. Hit the F key to fill in a face. Hit Command R for another loop cut, flatten out the top, and that's the filler. So let's bring this back, and we got our filler and our cube. And I want this to import so it's already flat in the center of the screen. So I'm coming out of edit mode. I'm selecting both of the items, hitting G and Z. I'm going to drag it so it sits on the bottom here. OK. And let's go to File, Export, Wavefront OBJ. Uh, s name it something different and export it. It's going to take a little longer because I made it a much more dense render. Uh, I also didn't put on the flat shading, but my mesh is so dense um, that I don't think I really need the flat shading. I don't recommend doing this because it's breaking my computer. Uh, I might. Hold on. Okay. This is going kind of slow. I'm going to skip and honestly redo this with a less dense mesh. Um, where it's not at 6. This is why it's important to make sure that uh, you, you keep track of how dense your meshes are because the denser the mesh, um, the, the more intense it is on your hardware. Okay, so that finished itself. I'm going to make this 4, 4, 4, and I'm coming back over here. And making this one four, four, four. Selecting both, right click, bring up this menu, do shade smooth. You can also do it by doing up here, object, and shade smooth is right there. It's in a different place. So this is going to export a lot quicker. File, export, wait for an OBJ. And I don't know if you can see the last one. The first one we did was just really tiny. It was only like 200 bytes, you know? And then this one was 24 megabytes. So this one is going to be a lot smaller. Saved much quicker. Look at that. It's already done. My computer's chugging because I've got a lot of programs open and I'm recording. So this is going slower than normal. So let's get rid of this. Delete. Command I to import the new. OBJ2, one megabyte, whereas if you do that denser mesh, it's much bigger. So one megabyte is much easier to deal with, at least for my machine. 
and it imported and it is also flat on the scene. So let's go over here to cube one, make it glass. Cube two, let's make you gold because that's, that's a cool thing. And we're going to go over here to the render and we're going to notice something a little weird. It's because the meshes are sitting on the exact same spot. So what you got to do is you just got to make sure you have the internal product selected. You're going to go to your scale tool and just hold shift and make it just that much smaller. And then it's going to make uh, it look a lot better. Now, this is really just kind of it. It's just sort of, sort of introduction. I will be showing a lot more. Um, but otherwise, I highly recommend exploring this program. It's Blender 2.8. Um, it works very well with Adobe Dimensions. And um, there is a huge wealth of YouTube tutorials of people explaining Blender and sharing. And there is a strong community for it. Um, it's free can't stress it enough you don't spend money for this program unless you want to donate to it um, it's incredibly lightweight it is the most lightweight 3d program there is um, what it's capable of is industry professional grade stuff it can do photo real it's endless its list of things is endless it's worth checking out and getting into if I've done anything in this tutorial is it's gotten you excited for this program and if this hasn't gotten you excited well, stay tuned because I'll be honestly demonstrating a lot of like really cool and powerful stuff. Um, yeah, so thank you again for clicking on. I hope that you found this at least interesting. Um, I'm sorry it's not really a, a good in-depth thing on Blender, but trust me, just type in Blender 2.8 um, and there's like hundreds of beginner tutorials, people explaining how to do stuff. Um, people who honestly know the program far better than I do. So I'd recommend uh, not just using me as a resource for understanding Blender, but n looking at me as uh, how to really, the best way to use Blender with Adobe, because sometimes there are issues, as there are always issues when you're transferring between different 3D programs. It's, it's always got some problems. But uh, yeah, so I'll be talking about that probably more in my next video as I go over a little bit of a beginner course in Blender, talking about a lot of the commands you really want to know, and um, just sort of spending more time to talk about what's in the program. Not really... And then, yeah, so thanks for tuning in. Uh, be sure to smash those buttons below, whichever one you like. Looks good to you. Thank you. Uh, and have a great day.